Hello, you're about to hear Good Morning Seminole, our monthly signature event. Please enjoy. Now let's get into our program today on Amazon's future plans. I am very excited to hear about this. Please join me in welcoming today's speaker to the stage to begin our presentation. We've got Sam Blatt here with us, CECD Manager Economic Development, Southeast U.S. and Puerto Rico for Amazon. Come on up, Sam. This podcast is sponsored and produced by AVL Essentials, your essential audiovisual production company. From podcasting to live event production, we have you covered. Please visit avlessentials.com to learn more about as, us. As she said, my name is Sam Blatt. I'm Economic Development Manager for Amazon, covering the Southeast United States and Puerto Rico. What does economic development mean for Amazon, you might ask? Well, I'm kind of like the first point of contact that a community has when we're looking to develop a facility in a particular community. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure that we're going to be welcomed there um, and that the community wants us. Uh, earning trust with the local community, the policymakers, politicians, going through all the fun stuff like land use, zoning, permitting, and all that stuff as well. Incentives, if it makes sense, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and then being just sort of an ongoing community liaison presence with the facility, uh, partnering with colleges and universities for workforce development, um, partnering to develop press releases, and just being an ongoing community presence. So. Um, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, so somewhat relatively close to you guys. Um, before this, I was with the Miami-Dade Beacon Council, which is the economic development organization for Miami-Dade County, and prior to that was in community economic development in Miami-Dade. Um, originally, I'm from Indiana, though, and spent 20-something years there. I'm a Hoosier, uh, <laughs> so that's my where I'm from and kind of my my roots is, is still in Indiana, but I was, I was done with the cold, so move down to, to sunnier places. So um, you can see there is our, is our kind of our tagline, have fun, work hard, make history. Um, that's what we're trying to do at Amazon, whether it's in a warehouse or in a boardroom, we're always trying to strive to, to change the world. Um, I don't think I need to spend too much time on exactly what Amazon is. I'm sure most of you know Amazon or maybe Prime members. Um, actually. Show of hands, how many of you have ordered a package in the last month from Amazon? That's what I thought. Uh, I won't get, <laughs> I won't ask numbers and how many you ordered, but, um, but see, this is a testament to Amazon and what we do. Uh, the reason it's, it's such a popular company. Um, if you ever see an interview from Jeff Bezos, for example, and if in, the interviewer is, you know, like, what drives you, what makes you so passionate about this, he always says it's all about the customer and, you know, what the customer wants is what we do. And it's kind of funny to hear him, like, continually say that, but it's true. And if you just stop and think about it, you can get basically anything on Amazon that you want, whether it's something basic like, you know, paper towels or, or something like that, but also random little widgets that you need for this plug and this one thing. Or like for example, last week I ordered this specific uh, fence for my dogs because we had a porch and we needed to put a fence up so the dogs wouldn't run out and I didn't want to have them tied up. I was able to find the exact measurement that I needed, the one that fit the, the, the same color that I wanted on Amazon and it was delivered to my house in two days. If I wanted to go find that in the store, I'd probably have to go to two or three different places, maybe find one that maybe works, but isn't exactly what I'm looking for, right? And I'm sure many of you have similar stories like that. And that's why we're such a customer-centric company. Um, on top of being customer-obsessed, which is one of our leadership principles, uh, we're also trying to be Earth's best employer. That's a very lofty goal. I don't think that anybody would say that we are there yet, um, but we are taking steps to try to also be uh, really taking care of our employees. And a lot of that was definitely highlighted, I think, during the pandemic. We saw how important it was that packages get delivered and also how important it was to keep our employees safe and feeling secure when they're at work. Um, so we're actually 28 years old this year, and so coming up on 30 years old at Amazon, um, started in Bezos' garage, and now we've got over a million employees just in the United States. So. Even though Amazon, you think of the website, you know, Amazon.com, you think of the facilities and logistics, obviously Amazon is a much broader, it's almost a, a whole ecosystem of different, different companies. We have countless subsidiaries. Some of them are on this page, and 
That's not even all of them. It barely fits you know, just there, but obviously we've got the Whole Foods, the Amazon Fresh grocery stores. We've got products like a Kindle. We had the infamous Fire Phone that did not take off and was a complete flop, but you learn from your mistakes. Um, Zappos.com used to be you know, where you'd go to buy shoes and now it's been incorporated in Amazon. Uh, Ring and all those Amazon Studios, if you're a fan of some of those shows, there was the Lord of the Rings that aired recently. There was the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is an Amazon studio show, and countless others. Even though we're not just a logistics company, that is a major focus of what we do, and it's a major focus of my role as economic development manager at, at Amazon. And so we always start with, okay, how can we get this package to the customer as quickly as possible? and as efficiently as possible and as safe as possible. And so we start from our customer and we work backwards. We have been continuing to hone our delivery network to try to get the package to our customer as quickly as possible. And so, you know, for a while it was like, there's no way you can do two day free, free shipping to a customer. And then it was, there's no way you can do one day free shipping. And now if you order some products, you can get it literally within five hours of clicking the button to buy it. It'll be delivered to your door. And so we're constantly honing this logistics network. And so I'll just kind of quickly go through at a very high level, because there's a lot of different sort of subcategories in this uh, diagram. But basically, when a third-party seller or Amazon, which also manufactures its products, we get everything in bulk. It goes to what we call a cross dock. It's kind of a pre-first mile uh, facility. From there, using an algorithm that I do not understand and will never understand, they decide where these packages are going to go to our different fulfillment centers around the country, like the one in Deltona, um, or the one down by Orlando International Airport. And that's where really the magic starts happening from a customer standpoint. So when you buy a product on your phone or on the computer, it starts at that fulfillment center, and that's where it's either packaged up by a, her a human or a robot brings that package to a person, and then it's you know put in the Amazon smiley face box, gets the black tape, and then it goes out to a sort center, which then sort of takes it down by zip code and sorts the package to then finally go to our last mile facility. A delivery station is one type of last mile facility, um, but we also have others, and that's where you'll see those gray vans with the blue smiley face. Those are the ones who are actually delivering your packages. In some cases, we also have flex drivers, which is kind of like an Uber model where you'll have somebody in their car deliver the package. So that's a very quick and dirty explanation of just sort of the first, middle, last mile. Um, we have a lot of last mile facilities in the Orlando region. We've got one up in Daytona Beach as well. So we're one of the largest private employers in the state of Florida. We've got nearly 60,000 employees across the state, and that number is continuing to grow. We've got 13 fulfillment and sortation centers around the state, and we're about to have 14 when the one in Daytona is completed. We've got another one in Tallahassee under construction as well, if you've heard about that. So you know, I would say within the next couple of years, we're going to be up to 15, 16 uh, fulfillment centers across the network, 34 different last mile delivery stations as well, Lakeland, we've got a massive regional air hub, which is also considered a middle mile because the fulfillment centers will bring the packages to our Amazon Air, and then they'll ship it across the country uh, to then be delivered to somebody. So that's how we're able to also get your packages to you within one or two days because we utilize all means of different transportation. We've invested over $18 billion in the state of Florida, and we have over 137 small and medium businesses that sell on Amazon or contract with us. So this is just kind of an um, overview of our footprint in the I-4 corridor. So I would say from Orlando going up through Deltona to Daytona Beach, um, we've got over 10 different facility types in this region, more than 7,000 employees across the I-4 corridor. The major facilities that we have, we have six delivery stations, those last mile facilities. Most of those are clustered in the Orlando area in Orange County. We've got one in Daytona Beach. But then we have a few of these major fulfillment centers. So we have the one that's called a Amazon Robotics Sortation Fulfillment Center, which is in by the uh, MCO Airport. Uh, we call it an ARS in Amazon. And that's for any product that is basically um, about 18 inches long or wide and is less than 40 pounds, will be delivered through a robotic sortation uh, fulfillment center. That's where most of products go. That's where most of the volume is. If you actually stop and think about all the things that you're buying, most of those things are not more than 18 inches long and not heavier than 40 pounds. If they are, 
though, you know, your electronics, pieces of furniture, things like that, they'll go from our traditional non-sort fulfillment centers. The one that we have in Deltona is a traditional non-sort or a TNS fulfillment center. So that's where more of the bulky products are coming from. The smaller products are coming from the ARS in Orlando. So those are our two existing ones. We've got over 2,000 employees at the Orlando Fulfillment Center. We've got over 1,000 at the one in Deltona. And now we have another uh, robotics fulfillment center under construction in Daytona Beach by that international airport as well. Um, that's hopefully going to be finished construction towards the end of next year or 2024. The supply chain and economics have kind of thrown a wrench into our original plans, but we're still planning on opening that hopefully uh, soon. Now, I do, I do want to say here, and I know that it's kind of awkward. I'm, I'm sitting in Seminole County, and there's actually no dots in this county, and there's kind of a <laughs> gaping hole. But I will say, first of all, we're always continuing to grow, and I don't think that this will be uh, a place where we have no f fulfillment centers or, or, or facilities forever. You know, if it makes sense to, from our customer demand perspective, we'll open a facility here. But more importantly, like I was talking to Eric about Topkoff, and he was saying how the team from uh, Deltona actually went down to the Topgolf and had like a social event there um, at, that, at that location uh, to celebrate you know, some milestone. And that's an example of even though we don't have a facility here, our associates are still coming here, they're spending money, they're shopping at your local uh, stores. We have over 600 employees who actually live here in Seminole County. So those are the folks who go to work and then they come here and they shop, they eat, they dine. Um, and so we're contributing to the economy of Seminole, and we're also, you know, we're relying on your infrastructure. I-4 goes straight through Seminole County, um, and it's an integral part of, of our network and connecting the Orlando region to Volusia. So Seminole doesn't have a facility here, but there's definitely a lot of economic uh, benefits that are accruing to this county and to its companies um, despite that. And then I'm just going to show some pictures here. Um, this is our facility in Deltona. This is the traditional non-sort. It's about a 60-foot high ceiling and about a million square foot um, footprint. You can kind of see, there's not a lot of employees who were there at the time, but you can kind of make out they're, they're spelling MCO2 uh, with the people there. Um, and that's because that's every Amazon facility has a uh, three-letter site code with a number. And so the MCO1 is our fulfillment center down by the airport in Orlando. This is MCO2 because it was the closest international airport. The one up in Daytona is going to be DAB2. Uh, we have MIA1 and 2 and uh, FLL3 and all sorts of different uh, facilities. So this is why they're, they're spelling out MCO2. We had a tour uh, with some of the folks from uh, Deltona and Volusia County. You might recognize some of those faces there uh, who are, are friends of ours as well. This is a area we took back in May of our robotics facility that's under construction in Daytona. You can actually see in the background there, if you look closely, the, uh, the stands from uh, the Daytona 500 Speedway there. Um, and you can see they're just putting up the scaffolding here in May. This is another shot from the other side where they were still just laying the foundation five months ago. This is that other side just a few days ago. You can see this one is four stories high. It's going to be more than 2 million square feet sitting on a 635,000 square foot footprint. And so this is going to be a massive facility, and it's going to have tons of product going through. This is the other side again. You can, again, see those four stories there, and it really is starting to look like a building now. We're getting that tilt wall up. Um, and again, hopefully, th and the, the thing about these facilities, I will just say, is that a lot of times they'll look like they're done on the outside. But there is so much equipment, machinery, technology that goes inside of these facilities. It'll look like it's done and be sitting there for 12 months, but there's so much magic going on on the inside uh, that you just can't see from the highway. And then when, it, when it's done, it's going to look like that. So this is actually my favorite slide, even though it's just four bullet points of letters. And the reason that is is because I think this is really where the value and the magic of Amazon is at, is in our associates and our employees. So we're working really hard, like I said earlier, to make sure that our employees have a good experience, that they're being safe, they're treated well, they're treated fairly. Our minimum starting wage at Amazon is $16 an hour now. Average wage is about $18 an hour. Depending on where you're at in the market, it's going to be more or less than that. Um, but 
what's really valuable about, I would say, our compensation is, is below the hood of that hourly pay. We offer some of the best benefits in the business, and you know, I think it's, it's a real testament to, to our company that we're able to do this. So, for example, if you're a full-time employee at Amazon, you can just pay 90 bucks out of your paycheck pre-tax, and you get free physical, free dental cleaning twice a year, your free eye exam with the insurance covering part of your glasses or contacts, $25 co-pays, $35 for a specialist, you've got 401k matching, um, paid paternity leave, paid maternity leave, paid pregnancy leave, and, and a lot of other benefits as well. And these all start on your first day of employment that you're able to utilize these. And again, these are not folks who necessarily have to go and get a four-year degree or even have a high school diploma. You literally just need to be 18 years old and have an ID and you can work at Amazon. And then from there, you know, you're able to access these benefits and this pay. So it really is raising the bar on what is considered an entry-level position uh, in, in the communities where we, where we serve. One of the coolest things that we have to offer um, is something called career choice. Our career choice program is if you work for Amazon for at least 90 days, so three months on the job, you have access to 100% prepaid tuition to colleges, universities, technical schools, um, and things like that. So that ranges from something as, as complex as a four-year nursing degree or computer science degree, all the way down to something basic, you know, a two-year technical degree, or even something as basic as English as a second language certificate, a GED or high school diploma, things like that. That's all prepaid for, by Amazon up to a little bit over $5,000 a year of that value. And as long as you work at Amazon, you have access to that benefit. So even if it's four years, five years, six years that you're in school, we're going to be paying for it as long as you work for us. And this is, and again, when you get these, these uh, degrees, a lot of times you're going to then leave the company and go do the passion that you want to do. And we are fully okay with that because we're realistic enough to realize that some people don't want to work in a warehouse their entire life. Some people don't want to be in logistics their whole life. If you do want to do that and you want to have an opportunity to, to grow and to move up, we have those opportunities. But a lot of folks have other passions and desires, and so we're there to help facilitate that. And then I'll just kind of close on, I don't know, giving my corporate pitch about how great we are. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, community engagement is a big part of what we do as a company. Me being here is part of that community engagement. We try to be involved in chambers and we be involved in nonprofits, toy giveaways, backpack giveaways for, for school, for kids. Um, but then there's also really more important and critical ways we support places. You know, um, the Hurricane Ian that hit was the third deadliest storm to hit the United States in over 100 years. And we were able to provide over 2.3 million products to the affected areas, whether that's hygiene equipment, um, food, pallets of water, tents, tarps, things like that. We were able to get those there. We utilized our entire network to provide um, different supplies. And in fact, Deltona provided pallets and pallets of water to the folks affected um, around this area, actually, as well, and in southwest Florida. So we were able to activate our network and, and help those in need. And we you know, did that immediately. Thank you. Uh, another big thing, you know, I've talked about how we use planes and we have vans and we're, it's a big carbon footprint if you think about it of what we're doing. And so because of that, we were very conscious to work very heavily to invest in sustainability. Amazon co-founded the Climate Pledge, which is where we're gonna be investing $2 billion in green technologies and processes to make sure that we're carbon net zero by 2040. By 2025, and again, we're at the end of 2022, right? So this is not like some far off goal. This is really a couple years from now. By 2025, we wanna be on 100% renewable energy on all of our facilities. So the one in Deltona is gonna be retrofitted so that it's 100% renewable energy and, and not having a carbon footprint. By 2030, we wanna have 100,000 electric vans on the road. So when we're delivering your packages, we're using electric vans. We've already got some of those that are up and running uh, with a company called Rivian around the country. And we wanna um, ultimately, like I said, by 2040, be completely having no carbon footprint that is uh, emitting more than we're taking in. Um, 
Military hiring is important to us as well. We're pledging to hire over 100,000 veterans or military spouses by 2024. So over the next two years, we're making really great progress on that. We offer um, tailored special computer programming classes um, and basically a pathway to a lucrative career for military veterans who we hire. And finally, we are a big supporter of small businesses. Obviously, we've got ways that you can sell on Amazon. There's free webinars. There's a step-by-step -step process that literally explains what is e-commerce all the way to here's how you can leverage your products to make sure you're getting on that front page on Amazon. We have supplier um, that we use as well for our different uh, facilities. And so we're really utilizing a lot of the different things um, when it comes to supporting small businesses. So that's, um, that's my, my spiel. Um, this is my email if any of you guys want to reach out to me about any, anything, any opportunities. Um, I'm happy to take questions if anybody has any. Hey, good morning, Sam. Thanks for coming over. I, I'm also a uh, refugee of Tampa Bay. I lived in Oldsmar, so thanks for making the drive over. So uh, I'm the chief financial officer for the International Airport in Seminole County. So we would love to see an SFB1. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. My question for you, so we, we're, we're really proud of the fact, uh, even though we're a small hub airport, we have an 11,000 foot commercial runway, which as, as you probably know, can accommodate any cargo aircraft you, you can possibly, you know, 787s, 747s, what have you. So we think we are a ripe destination for an intermodal uh, facility. Uh, we have 600 acres of developable, uh, developable square footage. We would love to have an Amazon building on that on our campus, I, but but you know, kind of shameless pitch off to the side. Of, right? I'd like to understand though, you know, from from like your logistics strategy, uh, how should we be thinking about like an intermodal relationship within your network? So yeah, first of all, to your to your point. Um, this is why I said we're likely at some point probably going to have some sort of footprint in Seminole County if it makes sense for customer demand. It's all based on supply and demand, right? So first of all, if the customers, we see a gap in the fulfillment network, if we see a gap in the supply chain, we're going to look for a place to, to locate there. Um, and then it's all about the supply. Do we have the supply of quality labor? Do we have the supply of land that, that is available? And it, Sounds like, in your case, there is land, and honestly, I'd be happy to talk to you afterward or get your information, because um, we're always kind of looking for, for opportunities to invest. And so, you know, I, I think that at some point, something's going to happen here. Um, I can't make any promises, but it really is just a supply and demand issue um, at the end of the day. But would definitely love to, to take a look at what you guys have at the airport. Good morning, and thank you for the presentation, Sam. Pam Harges. Um, this is kind of a selfish question, but I saw that you had a tour with some of the Deltona um, people. Do you have tours on a regular basis at your Deltona location? And could that be something the chamber does as an event? I knew when I put that picture up I was going to get that question, <laughs> which, is, which is great. Um, the, to answer your question, we don't have regular tours. Before COVID and really before the pandemic, they used to have a lot more tours. They'd have you know kids from schools go in. Um, since then, it's really been scaled back. That said, if there's a, um, a group that is interested and it makes sense for them to be there, and you know they happen to have ties to the community, um, then we can make it happen. And uh, perhaps we can talk about uh, having a tour of the Deltona facility with you guys, or if you want to see also one in, in the Orlando area uh, as well. Personally, I think the robotics facility, so the one down by the Orlando airport, is actually a lot cooler. You get to see the robots move around. but. Um, yeah, we can talk about that, because always happy to show folks what we're doing inside and the magic that's happening. Good morning, Sam. Being an old, literally and figuratively, uh, veteran as well, but what you guys do with your infrastructure and your logistics and your management is amazing. But I know none of us here have ever done this. What happens when you return a product? Where does it go to, and what's the process for you guys on the back end? <laughs> Right. Yeah, what a, what a process, right? Um, so that's actually, I will say, one part of our network that we are continuing to improve. Um, we actually have launched a new type of facility. It's called a Kariba. Um, and the Kariba facilities are made to literally take in the packages that are returned. Um, 
I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I will. A lot of times folks would return packages and they would just sort of sit in these facilities and just sort of pile up and there was no place, there was no mechanism to get them back um, and to reevaluate whether they could be resold or not. And so that's actually part of what we're working on now and we're creating these new uh, facility types that are basically, their job is to handle returns, process those, determine whether you know, the product can be resold or whether it needs to be retired. Um, so that's a whole other type of facility that probably gonna have to add that onto that graphic slide where pre-mile, first mile, and then I'll probably do post last mile. So Maybe it's Airport. that's right. <laughs> All your returns will go to the airport. Yeah. Good question. Hi, I'm Tammy Ortiz. I am a strategist for a high school. Um, we are called the Problem Solving Incubator. So um, great statement because on the heels of that, um, what are you doing in the community in regards to high school and your future workforce? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we have a program called Amazon Future Engineers um, that we've launched around uh, the country and there's a lot of uh, of those schools in Florida that we use as well. And that's for, really, it's, it's driving from our Amazon Web Services uh, company, which is, you know, that does a lot of the back end of web pages, and maybe some companies in here utilize AWS. But basically, it's teaching those students basics in programming, computer science, um, and we have that, and would love to talk about partnering with Seminole County Public Schools on that as well. That's, that's one thing. Uh, we also offer internships and sort of pathways from, for high schoolers um, into, into roles as well. Um, another thing we do is we literally have a, a management program where we look for entry level managers, floor managers in our warehouses. So it literally will say, you know, you have to have graduated between 22 and 24 to even apply for this position. Now the pay is a little bit lower than a normal manager because there's no experience there, but the whole goal there is to help them grow into uh, the management role in logistics. And so there's a lot of different things we have. Um, we can talk about you know, different curriculum development that we can do. Uh, Amazon's economic development organization, we actually just hired a director of workforce development. So we see the value and the importance in cultivating you know, that young talent. A lot of the, the work that we've done has really been focused more at the college level. And so we're now sort of trying to also emphasize uh, you know, secondary education and high schoolers as well. Sam, thanks for coming out. Um, what is the future with Amazon with drone delivery? Yeah, good question. Um, I wouldn't expect drones to be flying over your head in the near future, um, but we did launch a pilot program with our drones in College Station, Texas, as well as in, um, I think, Bellevue or somewhere up in the Seattle, Washington area, where, of course, is the mothership of Amazon. Um, and so they've launched sort of these preliminary programs Obviously, there's a lot that goes into this. There's a lot of um, risk that has to be mitigated, making sure the packages are safely delivered, making sure we're following FAA guidelines. Um, but the goal of this is actually to get it down to a 20 to 30 minute delivery time using drones to where they would deliver the packages in your backyard. Um, but again, you've got to account for a lot of different variables when you're using autonomous drones, and that's why they're doing this pilot program um, in certain parts of the country. You've got to worry about weather, you know, uh, electric poles, pets if you deliver the product there. Um, and so there's just a lot that goes into it. And so I would say we're very far off from this being something that we deploy um, across the country. And it wouldn't make sense, I think, in certain communities. Um, so, but we have started the pilot program that was launched earlier this year. Uh, but, you know, I know people have been talking about the drones for probably 10 years now. And that's because it's just taken so long to try to understand and to utilize that technology in a safe and responsible way. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. That was wonderful. I know I ordered my first Amazon product in 2004, so I think I helped put like a little stucco on that building in Deltona, maybe. Um, but yeah, big fan. I love what you do. Subscribe and save. I use it for the business. There's just so many, so many benefits. Like you said, finding those unique items that you just, you can't go to multiple places. You're not really sure if you can find it, and uh, you can always find it on there, so that's fantastic. Thanks for listening. 
To learn more about the Seminole County Chamber, please visit SeminoleBusiness.org or check us out on our social media at Seminole County Chamber.